switching over to metathesis reactions. In these reactions, we don't have any oxidation states changing. There are no electrons being rearranged. The only thing that's being rearranged in these reactions are the atoms. Many different reaction types fall in this category. We're going to focus on just a few. The main one being double replacement reactions. And double replacement reactions primarily occur when these compounds are dissolved in water. They are in aqueous solution. The easiest way to identify these reactions is to see that they are going to be made up of two ionic compounds on the reactant side. The general format is going to look like this, where AB is one, an ionic compound, CD is another ionic compound. You're going to produce the ionic compound AD and CB. A and C in both of these compounds represent cations, positive ions, either being a metal or ammonium. The B and D in all these compounds are going to rep represent anions, either a nonmetal or a polyatomic anion that's going to have a negative oxidation state. Let's look at a couple of examples. If we look at the general reaction, we will see that A, B, and C, D react. We'll see that A in one compound is going to be, go with the D from the second compound. So if the A represents the positive ion in the A, B compound and D represents the negative ion in the second compound, those two are going to come together and form a product on the, react, or on the product side. The other product then is going to be CB. C again is the positive ion. It has to come first. B is the negative ion. It's going to come second. In the next reaction we have hydrogen chloride and sodium hydroxide. If we take a look at their oxidation states, we'll see that they all have ones for their oxidation states, just opposite. So we got one plus and one negatives. In this reaction, we're going to have the hydrogen and hydroxide, the hydrogen from the hydrogen chloride, and the hydroxide from the sodium hydroxide forming a compound on the product side. This is our switch. We're trading places. We also then get the sodium from the one compound reacting with the chloride from the other compound. We've completed our switch. We also notice that all of our oxidation states are the same nothing has changed and that's why these are not redox reactions and why they are metathesis reactions because metathesis reactions have no changes in their oxidation states. In our next reaction again we've got our ionic compounds reacting with each other on a reactant side. To predict this we are simply going to have to look at how these ions trade places. The zinc is going to trade places with the lead so zinc is going to go with the sulfate on the product side and the lead is going to go with the chloride on the product side. Now you'll notice here that I've gone through and we've balanced the charges for the compounds on the product side using the oxidation states that we see on the reactant side. So you're going to have to identify what is the oxidation state for each element or ion on the reactant side so that you can use those same oxidation states on the product side. Really the only one that we have to worry about here is the lead. We don't know that lead is plus four unless we look at the formula for lead to four sulfate and we figure out that the lead is a plus four. So in this case, you kind of have to name lead 4 sulfate without actually writing out the name because we have to figure out what that plus 4 oxidation state is. The zinc, the chloride, and the sulfate, their oxidation states are all set. We know those. We've memorized those. So on the product side, when we write out these react or the products, we need to make sure that we have balanced the charges so that the formulas for those compounds are written out properly. In double replacement reactions, it really just simply is taking the first ion in each of the compounds and trading places.